So we'll open a new workbook and then we'll save this. Control S. You go to our folder. Let's scroll down. We have a folder cleaning batch. Then we'll take this macro enabled file class 8. So let's save. Right. So what we'll do, we'll create one small database here wherein I can save the data. Let's say here I'll say name, age, gender, then we'll say mobile, email, and then say batch. I want to get the data here, but based on a user form, I'll take the import and I'll paste it here. So for that, what we'll do is we'll try to create a user form wherein I'll put all the controls and then try to save the data. Before creating the form, always first you should study the database what you're trying to create and then you have to start creating the controls for each field. So how to understand this? Say I have this name. Name will be like a text box. Age, age is a text box. Gender, gender I can give a text box but there will be a problem that user can enter data of his own say sometimes it will be male. He can enter M-A-L-E or some people can enter M-A-I-L also. Then again it will be like I have to go and clean the data. Instead what we'll do is giving a text box I'll give an option button which will help me in selecting and then based on the selection I'll get the data here. Mobile number this should be text box email should be a text box then I'll take this branch. So branch means it will be like let's take a drop down because there will be multiple values wherein I can select one branch. So we understood the controls here. First thing I'll create the requirement based on the requirement I'll uh, you know create the database and then based on the fields what I've created then I should decide the controls. Now let me rename this I'll say double case user form and I'll say alt f11 here we'll try to rename this hit enter right click insert a module say f4 say mod underscore say user form this is for standard model we'll keep it aside right click insert user form see i have one form here this is the form where i'll be creating all the controls and take it as an input and then try to save the data in this text or say in this sheet let me run this see this is how the form actually execute in the sheet let me close. now what we'll do we'll try to create the links here i'll go i'll say name And we'll reduce this. We'll put it here. Next, we have this text box. So what I'll do, I'll put a text box here. So this will help me in taking the data. Let's run this. See, I can type the data. Whatever data is typed here, that should get saved in this cell. Let's go back. Likewise, what we'll do, we'll create all the controls here. Let's say I have this name. Then I told this age. Age will be again text box copy this and paste it you can recreate it or you can just copy and paste the same thing say age and reduce this width because age will take not you know many space or more much space so what i'll do i'll just go here and reduce this what is the next one gender i told you this should be an option i'll go here i'll take this option button and i'll put it here let me make it as male And then we'll copy this, we'll paste it, and we'll say female. Right. Now let's give a label for this. Copy this, paste it. And then I'll mention this as gender. Next control mobile and email. So these two are actually 
a text box let me take this copy and i'll paste it here i'll say mobile and then we have email we can take the same thing and i'll put it here fine next we have this branch so what we'll do we'll put it here only we'll take branch as combo box combo box means it's a drop down let me take this and i'll put it here like this copy this paste it this i'll say branch now let me reduce this so you can have say for example i have the form here suppose if you want to put this control somewhere here you can put it or however you want you can align the form see i made a very simple form here in that example i've given more other different examples as well you can go through that so here we're trying to take name age gender mobile number email and then i'll say branch for this what we'll do is we'll add two buttons here say submit and then we'll take one more button which says cancel let me put it here now let me reduce this see when i say run i'll get a form like this wherein i can enter all the data if i say submit the data whatever is entered that should go and sit here so what you have done now is the designing part you have designed the form now let me select this we'll try to rename all the controls why should we rename renaming has to be done because now let me double click on this it says text box one again let's go back see text box three so i'll not know which control is this so this is for name this is for age so which one is for age which one is for name it will be difficult to recognize so what i'll do i'll go here let me select this press f4 i'll get the property window like this here i'll say i'll name it as name but i'll not know whether it's a text box or it's an option button or a drop down or whatever so for that what i'll do is i'll go here i'll say txt and name the txt is nothing but it's a prefix for text box or say that control i have this age so what i'll do i'll say txt age next one is the option button let's take this i'll say opt main then here i'll say opt female i'm just trying to rename this now this is a text box again i'll say txt mobile here i'll say txt email i have this branch but this is a combo box i'll tell you why it is called as combo box later this is a combo box i'll say cmb fine now i have two buttons we'll rename this as well i'll say cmd submit and then cmd cancel so now let's go and double click on this see it says text me double click on any of other control see text mobile so now it is easy for me to recognize the shape or say control i can write the program easily on that particular say control otherwise it will become very difficult for me if it is text box one text box two so how will i recognize that okay um let's go here and we'll start writing the program so first step what we did we designed the form then we renamed all the controls and then now we are trying to write the program program in the sense if i go and if i run this whatever values i'll input here that should get saved in my database what i've created right let's say i'll click on this submit now here what you do is first thing is take the count i'll tell you why we should take the count here it will help me in tracking how many records i'm entering take this into one variable say bin intc as integer intc will be equals to wks user form range of t3 dot value so i've taken this 
count so that I'll know how many records I'm entering here. Let's go here. First, we'll take this value that is name. Say WKS user form dot range of it says D6 dot value equals text name dot value. Now, if I say D6, what will happen next time when I enter the data, it will be keep saving in D6 only. So I have to make this dynamic. So what I'll do, I'll remove this. Now here I'll say ampersand INTC. So INTC is what in the beginning? It is zero. That means it says D0 dot value equals text name dot value, wherein I don't have any row called as D0. It should start from one. But for me, the record should start from D6. So I'll say plus six. Now what will happen when I run this program? It will say from D6, it will save text name dot value. Let me copy this. Now we have some more text boxes here, say for age, mobile and email. That means I just paste it four times. This is E, I'll say E, then this one is G and H. So let's change this to D and H. Now here, let's change this to age. That means this age, whatever is there in the text age, that value will be saved in column E. Then we have this mobile, then we have email. If you want more controls and more data, then you can say address or a, um, you know data of birth. So you can keep on giving here. I'm just giving you some general things so that in get an idea, then you can improvise your form. So it will be similar kind. So if you want to add address, you just have to add one more control and then give a text box and just give the changes like this. So now what I'm doing, I'm trying to input all the values that is in the um, say text box so i have this gender gender is what it can be either female or it can be male that means it's a condition so what i'll do i'll go here and i'll say if opt male dot value is equal to true then else end it let me go here and i'll take this I'll paste it. Here. See, here it says male or female. So what I'll do? If this opt male dot value equals true, then I'll say this value that is f6 dot value is equal to male. Otherwise, this will be female. So this paste it. And I'll say female. Right? Okay. So let me run this. So here, whatever I'll enter here, I've coded here. If I click on the submit, all the values will get saved here. But for this branch, I don't have any value here. If I click here, whatever selections I'm doing, they should get saved in branch. But how to add these items, I'll show you that. Before that, I told you that this is a combo box. I'll tell you why it is a combo box. It is called as combo box because I can type here. Also, if I have some values here I can select it as well that is why it is actually called as combo box now you have to decide whether that should be a combo box or it should be only the selection so if you think that I want only the list to be selected the user should not type then what you do select this scroll down here I'll have something called a style and I'll make it drop down list instead of combo make it a list now you cannot type there I need to add the values to this that is we call it as item for this list so how to add that let me go here I'll create one list let me create one list quickly I'm just making some values here okay so I given some five branch names let me select this Take the list, select the list, and here in address bar, I'll say RNG branch. Done. That means I've created one list here. Now let me go and check. Just click on this RNG branch. See? Fine. Let's say Alt F11. Now select this combo box. Scroll down. Here I have this row source. Here I'll say RNG branch. 
I just typed RNG branch. Now let's go and check this. See, I'll get that list here. I'll repeat again. Go back. Take the list. Select the list. Name it. Then go to the control. Go to row source here and type that name and say enter. I'll get the list like this. Now my list is ready. Now for this, I need to code. That means whatever I've selected in my branch that has to be saved. Let me copy this and I'll paste it here. The column I dot value equals give that control name. See what is that we had given? F4 we had given comma box will make it as CMP branch. Go here, say branch dot value. So whatever I select here in this, so that will be saved here. Let's check this. I'll run this. Let's try to type some values. Mail. Then. We'll select see now I cannot type it. I cannot type anything. I, do, I just have to go and select it. Say submit. Now if you go and check this. See. The value whatever I entered there. It is available here. That means whatever I enter in my uh, say user form that will get saved here. But if you observe one thing when I'm actually entering what's happening. It is still available here only that means it is not getting closed so for that what i'll do i'll go here i'll say unload and we'll give the user form name it still says user form one so what we'll do is we'll rename this f4 select that form and rename this to frm details otherwise we'll say user form one one more form if i create user form two user form three so it goes on instead what i did i'm saying frm details and here you can see user form one that is the caption caption is it is label if you go here see it says caption so you can change this i'll say inquiry details right okay see i selected this user form here the user form name i've changed and here i changed the label as well label in the sense it's a caption see here I have this caption. If I change, the heading will change here. Now let me run this. See, inquiry details. And I'm selecting. So let me enter one more data. Just entering Gmail account. And here I'll say another branch. Now if I say submit previously it was still here only it was not closing now if I say submit see we didn't give that unload we we'll give this unload frm details let's try again okay. then we'll give this email id see to say submit see i had given this unload so what happened it closed now if you see this count is there so because of which it is getting saved one below the other like this like this, this see fine let's go back now here there is a problem actually what is the problem let's run this and i'll try to enter the data i'll not enter anything for this name and here in age i'll just type something and I'll not select any of this. I'll say submit. See, it still submits. And if you see here, can you see this? It is taking in age the text, and here it is blank, and all these are blank. So what we have to do is we have to validate. After program, now I know that the data is getting captured. But for me, when I'm capturing the data, these data, whatever I'm capturing, should be proper. The name should not be blank. 
the age what I have here that should be number and it should be from age 0 to 100 only in that case what should I do let me go here and we'll try to validate the data I'll go here and say validation how to validate so first thing the text name should not be blank for that I'll put if condition I'll say if txt name dot value equals blank then say end if if this is blank let's give one message box saying that the text that is the name should not be blank message box say please enter name that's say it's just an information you can give this the information and then let's give a title here i'll say yes inquiry details and we should say exit sub because if i'm not giving this exit sub it will it will check the condition but what it will do again further it will go here and it will execute the codes so to stop that what i'll do if there is a blank in text name dot value then give a message then exit this let's check this i'll not give anything in name now let me click on the submit see please enter name it will not allow it will stop there only that means this validation is done now what i'll do let's go back let's say i want same thing to happen for age in age i have many validations to be done so what are that let's go here age should not be blank it should take only numbers and then the number should be from 0 to 100 or anything let's say i want 0 to 100 or say 25 to 60 or whatever you want i'll just show you so that you can um, validate how, uh, for whichever number you want first thing is we'll see how we can validate it such a way that it should not take blanks let me copy this and i'll paste it here i'll say text age dot value equals blank so please enter age let's go here and check i'll just type now say submit see enter age because it's blank fine one validation is done let's try the second one that is i want only numbers to be entered here copy this and paste it here i'll say is numeric open bracket close bracket and remove this is numeric means it is checking whether it is number or not but for me it should give a message when it is not a number if it is a number it should accept but if it is not a number it should give me a message here what i'll do i'll say if not is numeric not is numeric of age then give me a message saying that please enter age as number let me run this now let me give a text but here instead of keeping it blank i'll give one text here see please enter age as number now if i give blank first it will give me enter age now i'm entering something if i say i'm saying enter age as number that means this validation is also done let's try again one more validation let's go here now instead of 0 to 100 i'll enter 300 now this is a number now i'll enter some mobile number and then i'll select a branch and if it says sub type see this is still taking this taking is 300 wherein my restriction should be from 0 to 100 only so these kind of validations will have to do let's go here what i'll do is let's say if text age dot 
value is less than zero or text age dot value is greater than 100 then say end now we'll take this message and i'll say please enter age between 0 to 100 like so what it will do it will check whether the age is less than 0 or greater than 100 if this is true what it will do it will go and it will give me a message saying that what you have done is you have entered a, a wrong age invalid age please check that let's go here and take this let me type now let me enter 300 Just submit see enter age between 0 to 100 that means we have validated it so like this you have to check whether it is giving me the right results so for all these controls, whatever is there, you can keep validating. Now let's say mobile number and email are optional. So you don't have to validate that. Suppose if you think that it has to be entered, then you have to make it a point that, um, you know, that has to be compulsorily entered and you have to write a validation code before the values are getting saved in my database. All right. So this is creating the forms. Now let me go here. Suppose I'm creating a form. I want more controls to be added. Then I can use any of these controls. Suppose if I want to add some more fields, say I want to add address here, then I can go and I can just take this text box and create one, um, say control here, and then add one column here and start creating the code here for that. So it's not that it should be only this. So you can keep adding forms however you want. Right? So okay. Now here I have few controls which are commonly used. Suppose if you add, if you want to add more controls, just right click here and say additional controls. Here I'll have so many controls. Here you can go and you can select any of these controls. I'll be having hundreds of controls here. Apart from this, we have something called as OCX files, wherein I can download it from Microsoft uh, website and I can, uh, you know, upload it to this controls and add more controls here fine now when i'm entering this i've entered all the data but i don't want this to be saved let's say i'm finding it okay let's not enter if i click on this cancel this cancel button the form should get closed so what i'll do i'll select this cancel and here i'll just say unload frm details that is i'm just giving the form name there. let's run this I'll click on this cancel it'll close so here in this uh, cancel button i'm not writing anything because this is just to cancel means it is just to close the form so nothing it will do it'll just close the given form the opened form fine so what we have done now we have created one form then we created the controls then we renamed it and then we programmed it we also gave some validations everything is done but till now when i'm opening the form so what i was doing i was trying to click here in the editor the f5 or click on this button and open but every time if i keep opening like that i cannot tell my client to go to the editor and then open instead what i'll do i'll go back i want to create one button here when i click on that button this form should get open okay so how to open that form by creating a button let's create one button say insert and then I'll go to this shapes and here I'll create one button here. let's format this and here we'll say open form we make it bold and then try to format it a little right click on this if I say as a macro, now I'll not get any macro here because I've not written any macros here. All the macros are written inside this user form. But how to assign the macro for this to open uh, that uh, you know the created form? What I'll do? Then we'll come back to this standard module which we had created. Double click, sub. I'll say 
open form. I'm writing a small, uh, you know, code. Say frm details dot two. Now let me go and right click here. That macro will be available. See, select this and say okay. See, if I click on this, I'll get this form. Cancel. It'll get cancelled and it'll be within this sheet only. See, I'll click on this form. I'll enter some data. I'll enter some mobile number. And then I'll select this branch and say submit. See, it will submit and will close within the sheet itself. Previously, I was opening somewhere here from editor. So what will happen? When I'm opening from editor, see, if I'm opening from editor, if I say cancel, again, it will go back there only. Now here, I'm just opening from here, it will open here. Suppose if I say cancel, it will stay here only. Fine, this is one thing. Now when I'm giving this form to an user, it should be very confidential. That means whatever data is entering and it is getting saved, all this should be confidential. This should not be seen by, uh, by the user who is entering this so for that what i'll do i'll go here say right click and we should hide this but when i say hide we'll have one more sheet here we'll take this form and i'll put it here this button and i'll hide this now now if i click on this open form see this form will get opened whatever data i'm entering here i've coded such a way that it will go and save in that particular sheet let me go here we'll enter one more name here a new data i'm entering and email id And I'll select the branch. Now if I say submit, see it submitted. Now the data what I entered in that form that will be saved here. Right click and say unhide. See, is the data what I entered? This will be saved here. Let's go back. The form what I'm creating here. So this form, okay, will be given to the user, and this database can be anywhere. It can be within this sheet, it can be within another workbook, or it can be in a database, or it can be in a server. Once I give this form, when I say submit, this submit in this code, we have to mention where the data has to be saved. Here I've given text name dot value. I'm saying it should get saved in this range of the same workbook. Suppose if I'm trying to save this in a different workbook, I have to mention the workbook here and then you have to save the data so you have to decide where the data has to be saved right so suppose if you want to save the data in ms access then i have to connect this to ms access so these things you'll be learning in your uh, dashboard sessions where i'll be connecting from excel to you know dashboard and how to save the data to pull the data from uh, access something like that. that's totally different but here we are trying to learn the form where this form is nothing but an input a form where I'll take all the inputs and then I'll put it in my sheet here or say we call it as database okay so this is what we have in our user form controls so if you have any doubts please ask me I'll 